There were no winners in the defamation case of Jeffrey Rush and the Daily Telegraph, but there was certainly one loser, Aaron Jean Nerville. The young, emerging star of Australian theatre is accustomed to the glare of stage lights, but six months ago she was dragged into a spotlight she had, for years, desperately sought to avoid. She made no formal complaint, and was not part of the newspaper's reporting which landed it and journalist Jonathan Moran in court. Ms. Nerville did, however, give evidence during the trial. It was torn apart by Justice Michael Whigney in a scathing judgment yesterday, who said she was prone to embellishment or exaggeration. Ms. Nerville was the key witness for Nationwide News, the paper's publisher, which unsuccessfully attempted to mount a truth defense against Mr. Rush's claims he was defamed in two 2017 articles. In the reporting, Mr. Rush was accused of inappropriate behavior during the Sydney Theatre Company's 2015 production of King Lear. The federal court ruled all but two of the imputations portrayed by the articles, including that Mr. Rush was a pervert and had behaved like a sexual predator towards Ms. Nerville, would have been clear to any reasonable reader. According to Media Watch host Paul Berry, the Telegraph's case couldn't have gone any worse. Among the losers from it, he said, were future victims of sexual misbehavior who may want to make a complaint to a news outlet. They are, going to be severely discouraged from doing so because the consequences are so extreme, he said. Justice Whitney's criticism of Ms. Nerville sent a very bad sign, Barry added. It will mean that any reporting of those stories will be much more difficult than it was. Justice Michael Whitney said she was not an entirely credible witness, although she was in a difficult and unusual position. video, Justice Michael Whitney hands down his verdict, ABC News, Ms. Nerville alleged several inappropriate incidents were witnessed by her older colleagues, who were complicit because they did not act. But the judge said her evidence was not only uncorroborated, but was contradicted by that of Mr. Rush, the production's director Neil Armfield, and actors Robin Nevin and Helen Budai. Ms. Nerville's contemporaneous statements about her relationship with Mr. Rush to journalists were at odds with her evidence at the trial, Justice Whitney said. Journalism of the worst kind both Ms. Nerville and Mr. Rush were expressionless as the result was delivered. Outside court, Ms. Nerville was more animated, saying she stood by her evidence and had told the truth. Video, Aaron Jean Nerville responds to Justice Whitney's verdict outside court on Thursday, ABC News, she would have been satisfied with a simple apology and promise to do better, she added. We need to make genuine cultural change in our professions and industries," Ms. Nerville told an enormous media pack.
we can do it. But only if we acknowledge and confront with honesty the problems and the complexities of the power imbalances in our workplaces. Misnerville said it had to be possible for a young woman working in theater who feels unsafe in her workplace to get that situation fixed. I will be spending a lot of my time on that issue from here on in, and I'm very much looking forward to getting back to my acting," she said. During his judgment, Justice Whitney did have at least one endorsement for Ms. Neville, saying she presented generally as an intelligent, articulate and confident witness. Ms. Nerville was not the only one who received criticism from Justice Whitney, the Daily Telegraph's conduct received sharply worded condemnation. This was, in all the circumstances, a recklessly irresponsible piece of sensationalist journalism of the worst kind, he said. When the stories, yesterday slammed by Justice Whitney as improper and unjustified, were published 18 months ago, Ms. Nerville did not want to be part of them. In arguing why she should be taken to be a truthful witness last year, Nationwide News's legal team said there was nothing in the proceedings for her except stress and anxiety. How right they were. More stories from New South Wales.